And one candidate looking to make a move up in the polls in the new year is former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson. Governor Hutchinson joins us now to talk about his campaign. Governor, thanks so much for coming on the show tonight. It's always good to be with you, and thanks for your great coverage on the border, which is such a serious issue for uh, all the people of America, whether you're in Iowa, Arkansas, or New Hampshire. So thank you for that coverage. Something has to be done there. It's urgent. I appreciate you saying that. And, uh, Governor, I know that you are still trailing uh, the field in the polls, but you said recently your campaign is still going full speed ahead. How do you plan to break through with voters at this point? Well, that's a good point, and everybody should know that uh, we are still in this race. Uh, we are looking forward to voters actually casting their ballots, and that'll happen January 15th for the first time uh, in Iowa at the caucuses. So uh, I have scheduled a two weeks solid in Iowa starting at the first of the year. We just finished a, a solid week there uh, campaigning uh, and listening to the voters and talking about the importance of returning to normal, talking about my record in border security, talking about uh, my record as governor, balancing the budget, and also how we've got to make sure that we get our country back on track in terms of our economy. That is what's hurting uh, Iowans, when, and that's what they're talking about. So the record I have is what addresses those issues, That what, what we'll be talking about over the next couple of weeks. Okay, I appreciate that. And Governor, the Colorado Supreme Court this week ruled Donald Trump ineligible to be on the state's primary ballot. Of course, you have been a strong critic of the former presidents in the past. Do you agree with the court's decision? Well, I've always said that the voters are gonna have to make the decision on this. And uh, the Colorado decision addresses a serious issue under the 14th Amendment. I think it is, I think what the United States Supreme Court will say is that it's premature, but they're gonna leave the door open. In other words, they're gonna defer a lot to the Republican Party as it chooses its nominee. It's not gonna insert itself uh, into that fight, but it looms over Donald Trump for the fall. And that's the challenge, that we're gonna go uh, close to the convention before we even know what's happening on the criminal cases, uh, before we know what's gonna happen on the 14th Amendment challenges, and that puts the voters in an impossible situation. And so this is going to taint Trump's candidacy all through the year. It's going to be like an albatross along the Republican, around the Republican Party's neck. And so we just need to be aware of what's at risk here. The voters are going to decide. I'm for that. And that's why we're going to be campaigning hard, looking to get uh, move up in the polls in Iowa and New Hampshire. Governor, what would you say to those diehard Trump supporters who will vote for him no matter what? Well, uh, I mean, that's America. And uh, that's there's a percent of those. And I understand it. I respect them. I have those conversations a lot. I just tell them, well, if you're going to vote for him. If he collapses, let me uh, be considered for your number two. And they get a laugh out of that. So we have to unite together at some point down the road. But what I want to address are the substantive issues, and Donald Trump is taking away from that, in essence, and providing some very simplistic solutions. But whenever you look at the challenge that we face along the border, I've been there, done that at the Bush administration. I know what has to be done now. President Biden is waiting too long to send his emissaries down to Mexico and say, we've got to get tough here. That should have happened a long time ago. It is unacceptable when you look at potentially 3 million apprehensions and they're getting court dates in the United States. They have to be returned to Mexico. That is essential. Thank you for that perspective. And Governor, let me ask, in the future, if you do decide to exit this race, which of your fellow GOP candidates is most likely to receive your endorsement at this point? Well, I've got my favorites, of course, but uh, that's premature. Uh, and I have a good relationship, good conversation with them. Uh, but uh, I want to make sure that my voice is heard and that uh, I want to be able to continue. We're getting on the ballot in Colorado. We are getting on the ballot in Minnesota. And so this is the long look, and that's what everybody has to think about. Don't look at, well, we got to narrow it down to two candidates in Iowa or New Hampshire. This is going to be a long campaign. Be prepared for it and listen to the voters. Can you give me the name of one person who definitely will not be receiving your endorsement? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, no, there's no sense being uh, negative right now. It's Christmas time. And so uh, uh, let's wait and see. Uh, obviously, I hope that uh, they look at endorsing me as I show strength down the road. But it, it, if I don't prevail, then obviously I want to look at others that I can be supportive of. But count on me going full speed ahead in Iowa, and uh, I'm looking to move up. Governor Asa Hutchinson, appreciate your time as always. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.